Hi, this video is to describe the application process for an AB540 student um, for the Los Rios Community College District, uh, specifically Sacramento City College, um, but this also is the same information for American River College, Casumnes River College, Folsom Lake College, and all of our outreach centers. Um, so this application uh, is for a student who's uh, considered AB540 which uh, is, uh, stands for uh, Assembly Bill 540, a law that passed in California in the year 2001 uh, that allows students, young people, um, undocumented young people who were brought to this country before the, uh, the age of 18. Uh, there, are, there are quite a few thousand students uh, that are in California that f fit this profile. Um, the Constitution of California guarantees their education up to the 12th grade level, but nothing beyond. Uh, the law in 2001 allows us to uh, offer this opportunity of higher education to these youth as well. Um, AB 540 students must meet certain criteria. They must have graduated from a California high school um, and also have attended any California high school for a minimum of three years. Uh, this could include some uh, a student who who showed up during their sophomore year but completed sophomore, junior, senior year, say, at two different high schools in Sacramento and graduated. That student would qualify for AB 540. If the student has only been uh, in, in high school, say, one year and graduated, then unfortunately that student does not qualify for AB 540 and would be charged non-resident tuition uh, if attending any uh, public uh, community college or high school in California. So, um, w without further ado, let's just assume this student, and I'm going to name her Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie Wilson is an AB 540 student. She has no valid social security uh, number. Um, so, let's get started. Uh, in order to, for her to apply, she would go to uh, our website, www.scc.losrios.edu. Immediately click on application, uh, online application. Um, after reading all of this, uh, she would click on Begin the Los Rios Community College application. Uh, again, this uh, application system is for the Los Rios colleges. That includes the four colleges listed here. Um, most colleges uh, are accepting applications online now, uh, and the process would be very similar. Um, you would be a new user, so new users click here. And uh, let's just start filling it out. Stephanie, and last name is Wilson. Uh, date of birth, uh, you know, this is all hypothetical, so uh, this student does not exist. Um, let's just say she was born in April 4th of 1994. Uh, for now, I'm skipping email. Uh, you can skip it if you wish and add it later once you learn how to use our e-services system. Um, again, hypothetical address as well doesn't, doesn't exist. Um, 5842, we'll say Allen uh, Way, Sacramento. America, uh, you know, phone number doesn't really matter. Again, it's hypothetical. I will delete this at a later date. Uh, 555-5500. Um, now, the username and password. It's important to write down every username and password we give you. Um, so here, you know, you can make something up. Um, Steph. It is. Okay, so we wrote that down. And then uh, password, I always make it simple, uh, just her last name. And then security question, last name. Um, this, uh, you will only use this specific username and password if you have to log out of this system. Um, to log back, you know, to log back in and complete the application. But the application is fairly simple. It only takes uh, 15 to 20 minutes to complete. So you really won't use this again um, anytime soon. Um, the next time you may have to use it is if you're applying online for what's called the Board of Governors Fee Waiver, uh, which exists at the California Community College only. It's for low-income students for, the, for our, uh, our Community College Board of Governors to actually waive their fees. Um, uh, the $46 per unit for California residents. 
Um, so, anyways, uh, if you forget it, no worries. You can y y you don't really need it. So create an account. Um, create an account has been created. So let's go to continue. Now again, Stephanie here doesn't have a social security number because she's uh, she uh, we know she qualifies for an AB uh, as an AB 540 student because she's uh, say she arrived here at uh, uh, the third grade uh, in California has never really left California completed her whole high school uh, here in Sacramento and uh, just recently graduated so um, we won't put anything here under social security number we're just going to skip it under gender we put female Citizenship status. This is a very important question for every 540 students because you're 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 neither of these. Uh, we we have you classified under other status. So make sure you put other status as your citizenship status. Um, AB 540 students normally don't have visas or anything like that. Um, date of birth automatically appears. Primary language uh, spoken for her is English. That's you know pretty much what she knows. Um, uh, race and ethnicity, U.S. Department of Education guidelines. You know, um, they're asking if if you're Hispanic or Latino. In this case, she's not. Um, what is your race and ethnicity? Uh, check one. Let's. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, we can say that she's white. Um, email. You know, I'm not putting it for this application, but yes, you should definitely always give us your email because we need to communicate with you when things happen, and that's the easiest way for us to do it. Um, everything else is just her basic information. Uh, for the e for the ease of this application, I'm just putting she does not have a cell phone. Um, the college will only uh, the reason we ask for this information is because sometimes there are emergencies. Anything can happen on a college campus. So if there is an emergency, a building's on fire, etc., uh, we would send text to everyone in the district to stay away from certain buildings if there were, say, something like a fire. So please, if you do have that information, please disclose it to us. Um, don't need to fill any of this stuff out because we already listed her address. We go to next. Um, it's asking if the if anything red comes up like this, make sure you read it. It says uh, if it if I'm sure the address is correct. And again, in this case, it's all hypothetical. So it's going to come down here to ask me if this is correct. And, and, and by clicking the box, I'm saying yes, it is, and we'll just go to next. Which term is she enrolling for? We're going to say she's beginning in January of 2013, which is uh, just a couple months away. So we'll click here. Uh, what is her educational goal? Um, this this isn't in stone, but if you do know, it's good to know. If you don't know, just put undecided on goal. Um, but in her case, she does want to transfer to the university system uh, after she receives an associate's degree from Sacramento City College and uh, continue on with her bachelor's degree. And we're saying she's majoring in business. And again, we have a whole lot of business degrees, but the one that's really geared um, for uh, transferring is the general business degree. Uh, so we'll say finish. Uh, you can change your major at any time. Most 18-year-olds really, in my personal opinion, don't really know yet what they truly want to study. So again, no, n no worries if you don't really know uh, what you want to do put here but take a good 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 educated guess um, will you be in K-12 K while in Los Rios this is a very important question in her case no she will be graduating um, before she shows up to us so she will not be in K-12 um, some students are juniors and seniors and and they're they're uh, uh, you know very advanced in their education so we do allow some students uh, of that caliber to attend while they're juniors and seniors. This question is really for them. Uh, in her case, no, she will be done with high school. And she's new, never before in college units. Uh, we go to next. You plan uh, to live in California while taking college courses? Uh, yes. Uh, when did your present stay begin in California? Um, again, she was brought to this country probably in 1998. So uh, again, this is all hypothetical again. Um, we'll list something like that, uh, February 2nd, 1998, uh, anything else, let me see, if you reside in less than, less than two years in California, you know, you don't really need to answer these questions if you have more than two years in California, if you have less than two years in California, yes, you do have to answer those questions, um, military status, uh, had never served in the military, no, she hasn't. Um, guardian information, if, if she is under the age of 19, 
then yes, she must provide us information in regards to uh, her parents. Um, the age of her, we put 94. So yes, we will have to provide that information. So uh, who's your parent legal guardian? We'll say mother. Uh, yes, she resides in California. We'll say from Canada. <laughs> um, it, it, it just, you know, really, I don't think it matters, but, uh, so it really doesn't, you know, we'll just say France. Again, we'll delete this later. Um, and again, another hypothetical date for this case, but if this was a true student, please place uh, the actual date of when your uh, guardian's present stay in California began. We use all of this information to determine how much to charge students, either residency or non-residency. Uh, 0301 of 1998. Still some errors, so we got to make sure we... Erased it for some reason, but let's just redo it. Okay, educational level. What's the highest educational level uh, that she has received? We're going to say she received her high school diploma. Uh, we'll just say she graduated this year in 2012. Uh, she did attend a high school in California. Um, if, it, if your high school is local, then you could probably find it here in alphabetical. Uh, if your high school is somewhere else in California or is not listed, then you, then you have a couple options here. <coughs> in Stephanie's case, we're just going to put other California high school. Uh, she, and she graduated in June of 2012. 2012. Her GPA, you know, she was a fairly good student, 3.5 or above. Um, no high school, no college information. Okay, I did not attend college. Uh, next. This asks questions about her uh, income and her family size. Um, since she does live at, at home, etc., um, income. So it, it's asking for a household, so that includes, you know, say her family that she lives with, so we would say somewhere around there. Again, hypothetical. How many individuals in your household, you know, some, bro some brothers and sisters, etc., um, parents. What are your expected hours of employment? You know, she's not working right now, but she is wanting to, so she's actively seeking. She's not enrolled in adult school. She's not received Workforce uh, Investment Act program. Um, She's not enrolling in less than six units. She's not enrolled in that other college. Yeah, she has a long-term objective. She's not receiving training at the works, no SSI, no general assistance. She's not a single parent. Uh, she's not a displaced homemaker. Highest education level of your parents, um, you know, we'll say high school for both. And down here, if there's any other college programs or information that she wants uh, sent to her, any of that info, financial aid, health, maybe uh, transfer services, um, correct planning services, EOPS, uh, these are all just different programs of assistance and general information that students can request. We hit next. Uh, these two questions here are security questions. You will need these answers log into your e-services account later. E-services is how you register for classes. So the question one, you know, pick something that you're going to remember. You know, in this case, what was your childhood nickname? I'm just going to put her first name, you know, her whole entire first name. Not really, not really something odd that we'll forget and then it'll, you know, cause us to come to campus three or four times to reset the thing. So we want something fairly simple. We're going to say, what was your childhood nickname? We're going to say, hey, what was her first name? Stephanie, and then uh, a PIN number, 46 digits. Um, I'm just going to put the year she was born. That way we know exactly uh, what the answers are when it comes time to use that kind of stuff. So we hit submit, and then she signs here, Stephanie. And submit. Now, you should print this page here, print a copy of this page, because sometimes if there are errors, etc., 
the systems go down, whatever, um, we do have a confirmation number here that you can show at admissions and records and they can locate the application. Um, that's basically the application. Once, once you submit it and you print this form, you know, put it in a safe place or, or in a binder and carry it with you whenever you come to campus just in case you need it. Uh, same with any username or password or security question answers that you set up because you never know when we're going to ask for them. Um, so other than that, you hit log off, hit OK, and then you can close the browser. Um, after about 20 to 30 minutes, your student ID number would be generated. Now, Stephanie's an AB540 student, so the process is a little different for her to request her student ID number. Since she did not list a social security number on her application, she cannot pull it up electronically. Her she cannot pull up her student ID number electronically. She will have to physically show up to the admissions and records office with the printout of her confirmation number. And she should tell the admissions office that uh, she needs to get her student ID number uh, because she's an AB 540 student. And the admissions offices know what to do. They'll, they'll, they'll do uh, so something on the computer and then be able to hand her her student ID number about 20 minutes after she requests it. So again, the process is slightly different for AB 540 students. As soon as you do not put a social security number on that application, you do have to show up in person to request that student ID number. Make sure you bring uh, like a photo ID, and it really doesn't matter what kind of photo ID it is. It could be your high school ID, uh, could be you know even a gym ID, because uh, you know we know uh, 17, 18 year olds they they have a tough time of you know acquiring a, a valid ID. Um, so some students might have uh, what's called a matricula. Um, other students might have a passport from a foreign country. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a photo and they can tell that's you. Um, that, uh, the admissions office will, will need some form of photo ID. So other than that, this is the uh, video for the AB540 uh, student application process. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us using through the website or uh, contact your admissions and records office of the school you will be attending. Thank you.